Hey guys. Hey, I'm gonna tell you guys in the next minute how excited we are and what we're releasing here. We've got the Allison transmission set up so you can drop it right behind your Cummins. Everything's seamless. This is our brand new bell housing. This bell housing allows us to take the Allison transmission, bolt it right up to the back of your engine, so everything works. The new electronics package makes all your creature comforts work. Everything's super seamless, so stick with me and I'll tell you all about it. Hey guys, Clint with ATS today, and this is the first of several series that we're talking about installing an Allison transmission behind your Cummins. So, you know, this has been a very long topic for years and years and years. As soon as the Allison came out in the Duramax, you know, all the 5.9 and especially 6.7 truck owners have been yearning to put in an Allison behind their Cummins. For good reason. You know, the Allison is, is, a, is, a, is a great transmission. So, not that the 68 isn't a great transmission, but getting there, you know, is, is, is expensive. And I'm gonna do my best to give you guys all the knowledge and gals um, when you're making this decision. Because generally, if you're even considering putting an Allison behind your Cummins, that means you've fully invested in your vehicle, you love your vehicle, and we use them to do our daily chores. And, you know, without your truck, you know, it's you're, you're you basically are handicapped and we get that and for that reason is why you know the 68 RFE has such a terrible reputation you know in the industry for being not reliable and just not being doing what it needs to do because bottom line it's a gas training so I'm gonna kind of take step by step and I'm also going to give you some insight on how the transmissions how how ATS after all these years has decided to go about doing a swap from either a 48 or a, or a 68 um, or an ASIN, you know, 68 or an ASIN 69, pretty much anything and being able to put the world famous Allison behind the Cummins and making, making it absolutely factory. When I mean say factory, like everything works. And it's like, you, it's like the factory symbol. And you can't hardly, you know, you, you can't argue with that. I mean, when, when the factory builds something, they set out to build something that is primo they do a really good job of it and that's the goal everything we do here at ATS the goal is to make everything what we call factory and that means factory fit everything works so I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of walk you through on these next few series on how we go about doing that so what you're looking at here basically is the 68 on the right side and the Allison on the left side and the parts in front of it are, are generally, I'm gonna do some, show you some comparisons between the clutch pack, the pumps, the input shaft, the output shaft, the valve body control system, the case. Um, so it kind of makes some sense for you. And I think by the time I'm done with this, you'll have a very good idea of if you're comfortable with the 68, you know, 68s are fantastic trainees once you build them, once you put all these parts in them, or if you wanna to upgrade to the Allison. So, this is kind of where we start. So I'm gonna give you a little background. The two trannies you see here, the 68 RFE transmission is essentially a 545. It's a, it's a gas transmission. It was designed, if you go way back, the basic transmission design was the gear set, the clutch pack design was designed by way back in the Lea Coca days in Chrysler and it was a caravan tranny. Yeah, a little front and rear-wheel drive caravan tranny. It kind of grew up, it got a little bit bigger, it finally went to rear-wheel drive, and then they, they blew, blew it up big enough to where it would actually made a really nice half-ton truck transmission, and that's essentially what's in the 1500 Rams, um, you know, for, for the last 15 years. And it's a pretty good tranny. And then in 07 and a half, when the 67 came out, they decided that they needed a transmission that was gonna work behind the Cummins, so they kind of got in a pinch and it was either, you know, make a deal with ASIN or Allison or take an existing Chrysler transmission and yet again, put it behind a bigger motor. So that's where the 68 RFE came out. 68 RFE basically was a gas transmission that was increased in size a little bit on the pump and the torque converter. So it could bolt right behind the, the Cummins and bigger bell housing. So what you have, so in essence what the 68 RFE is, is it's a 1500 transmission 
that has all the same planetaries, all the same gut bags, all the same clutches. Everything's the same, a little bit bigger pump and a bigger torque converter. So you can kind of see where that was headed. I mean, it wasn't headed down a great road. And what we have today is the entire aftermarket. We're dealing with all these ramifications of just an undersized transmission and probably not the best design power flow, which has a lot to do with the overdrive section. So I want you guys to watch one of my other videos that I go into detail and talk about all the upgrades in the 68 RFE. Now, I'm not talking you out of a 68 RFE because a 68 RFE is a great transmission. We do a ton of them. It's really one of my favorites, probably because I've invested so much time and money into making it great, but it's still a small transmission. So we're gonna kind of switch gears. Now we're gonna go over to the Allison. The Allison transmission, Obviously, Allison is a transmission company that has been building big Allison stuff for a very, very long time. And because of that, they're really kind of a heavy duty, you know, medium duty, heavy duty company. Well, in 2001, when the Allison 1000 came out, it was a brand new design, six speed automatic, gear ratios are very similar to the 68 RFE, but big. And what makes a, the, the Allison so robust right out of the factory is it's, it's a big transmission and it's also designed from a medium duty or actually almost heavy duty, but let's just call it medium duty because it's medium duty like the 3000 series. 3000 series is a massive tranny. It's the exact same power flow. So the, the gear set, the way, the way they handle power from first to sixth is, is, uh, is genius. I mean, it's fantastic. It's easy on the gear set. It's easy on the shafts. So the basic flower power flow is good, but bottom line is they took a 3000 transmission and they, made, they downsized it a little bit. So it was more along the, the lines of a medium duty transmission or a really stout light duty transmission, which is really about ideal for what we need in these trucks. I mean, when you're talking about, you know, a 5.9 or 6.7 Cummins, the amount of torque the Cummins makes is awesome. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. And especially when you turn it up. So now you're, now you're talking about an engine that doesn't really want to stop. You know, you keep putting weight behind it and it keeps grunting. So there's no secret that, this, that the Cummins motor, you know, is one of the best, you know, out there and absolutely the highest on torque. You know, max torque is a 1700 RPM. It torques heavily, you know, at 1200. And that's where, these, that's where these trucks, you know, you have normal gears in them, even normal sized tires. You're cruising down the interstate, you know, you hit a little hill, you got your fifth wheel in the back, whatever it is, the Cummins just keeps on trucking. And that's where the smaller components get into trouble. And, that, and that's kind of where the 68 start to get into trouble. The Allison doesn't because it's so big. So I've got a whole, I've got a whole other video also that, it, that explains all the all the upgrades and all the little intricacies that we do on the Allison. But I'll tell you, what we have to do the Allison to make it hold a reasonable amount of power versus what we have to do to a 68 to make it hold a reasonable amount of power is night and day. 68, we have to fill it full of billet parts. I mean, pumps and channel plates and, and clutches and co-pilot, all that other stuff. The Allison, we don't have to do a ton to it. We have to upgrade the clutch backs. We change the hydraulics a little bit. Um, we do have all the upgrades for the bigger power levels, but short of having to upgrade the torque converter and upgrade the clutch packs and the hydraulics a little bit, you don't have to do a ton. Now, so you're probably asking, well, it's a no-brainer. Why wouldn't I just stick an Allison in behind my Cummins? This is where the problem comes in, okay? So the first part is the Allison was never built with a bell housing that would fit your engine. This is the bell housing that it comes with. There's two bell housings. This is your GM bell housing. The other is an SAE bell housing because they did put the Allison transmission behind um, Cummins motors in medium duty vehicles all the time, dump trucks, all kinds of stuff. The deal is, is it's, an, it's, a, it's a big round bell housing, a big long adapter plate, it has mounts on it, and it's, it's so big it doesn't really fit into a light duty, you know, like the vehicles that we drive, right? So it does, it's not feasible. By the time you buy the adapter plates and try to move all around, you know, it's such a mess that it doesn't fit, it's too expensive. And then you roll into getting it to operate, and I'll get into that here in just a little bit. 
But when you're talking about bolting it up, when you adapt them currently today, you know, the entire industry, everybody out there, if you look at, you know, you'd, you'd Google um, Allison Cummins conversions, right? When you, there's, there's a ton of people that are, are companies that are, have kits and they're allowing the Allison to be bolted onto the back of a Cummins. The problem is, is everybody is using this GM bell housing. The reason is because that's the only thing that's available. So what you do in the GM bell housing, the GM bell housing is smaller, so it just allows the converter to fit. You have to put an adapter plate on your Cummins, which means you take your factory adapter plate off. I also have the second part of this video shows these modifications. <clears throat> you have to take your adapter plate off and then add another adapter plate and then change the flywheel. And then most inherently, which is terrible, which, is, which really drove me, motivated me because we're having so much, so many clients that were asking, will you please help me put a Allison behind my Cummins? Like, I don't like the way it has to be done because you have to grind half the block off. So literally, you have to get in there with the grinder and you have to grind the passenger side of the block. I mean, you, like, you have to grind it like all the way into the bolt hole. I mean, we're talking like an inch by four or five inches. You have to get in there and grind the block, which grinding a block is generally probably never a great idea. You know, in my opinion, I hate doing it. We just try to refrain from it. So realize the first thing we've really got to do is make the Allison transmission just a drop-in replacement. That means we need to make it bolt to the back of the engine. We need to make the transfer case bolt to it. And then we'll handle the electronics. Well, start going down the road and as we really was, once we identified that we want to, that we're going to go down this road and we're going to do everything 100%, we went ahead and dove in. This is the bell housing that we offer. So this bell housing, what we did basically is replace this bell housing, which is part of your pump channel plate. I mean, it's a, it's a big deal. It bolts here, right? So we made this bell housing that 100% mimics the Cummins or the Chrysler bell housing, so it bolts right at the back of the engine. The torque converter was the next part. You know, the 68 RFE, essentially, we, we build this torque converter from scratch because the, the factory converter is kind of the right size, but it, it doesn't, it's really wimpy. The clutch design, it's terrible. So our five-star converters, we manufacture everything inside of there and you get the torque converter. I've also got another video that you can look inside our torque converters and I'll kind of walk you through them exactly, the square tab and how it works. <coughs> the Allison, was pretty easy at that point because we take the same exact torque converter and we build our cover, make it a six bolt, make our uh, square tabs, billet stator, our impeller, all that stuff. So now everything is exactly the same. So when you put the torque converter in, the front of the torque converter mimics exactly what the 68 RFE is. So if you look at your center lines, your bell housing, your bolts, your dowel pins, where the converter sits, your hub diameter, bolts everything. Everything is 100%. So now you, you can literally drop your Chrysler transmission out and you bolt the Cummins transmission in. And you don't have to move the starter. That means you're using the factory starter, which is designed for the Cummins, instead of having to put a six liter starter on it, because that's the, that's the starter that's used because it's really small. Because remember, your base circle gets smaller. So everybody that's putting an Allison behind these things, they had to you know basically use the smaller converter and the smaller flex plate because it's smaller bell housing, and that forces you to get an aftermarket starter, which is six liter, the Ford six liter starter, is the only one that's small enough that's also gear driven, that's also not a reliable starter. So you grind the block and you get that starter really tied up in there so it'll get to the, get to the ring gear. Just, just not the kind of reliability that I'm after. So you get rid of all that, and now you have a bell housing that bolts up, you have a torque converter that bolts right to the factory flex plate. Now anytime you're doing a Cummins conversion, I mean, I really do highly recommend our billet flex plate, mainly because all of our converters, instead of the factory six bolts, have 12 bolts. So anytime you can increase the, the amount of bolts on the flex plate, you're going to take, you're going to cut that stress in half. So you're basically talking about reliability. <clears throat> so it all bolts up. So then we'll get into, okay, now the transmission is bolted in the vehicle easily. So you take your you know, your six hour retrofit channel plate or the retrofit backing plate, all that kind of stuff to kind of adapt one in to literally one hour, take the transmission out, bolt the transmission up 
And then the transmission's mounted, it's done. It's all factory, it's all very, very clean. Bolt your transfer case on, do a little bit of driveline work, start hanging components on it. So we've made the, the installation just super simple. Now, get into electronics, um, we'll cover that in a little bit later episode, but we've also made the electronics, so everything is completely factory. Your factory tap shifter works, your indicator. If you have a 68 ASIN or a 68 in the vehicle, literally the companion modules that we built so it takes the information from the Alice computer and translates it to the engine computer and the engine computer translates it back to the Alice computer. Everything is factory-like, so everything is very seamless. That means the vehicle you're driving around, the engine thinks that you still have a Chrysler transmission when you have an Allison. So your backup camera, your cruise control, your um, indicator, your tap shifter, your transfer case automatic shift, all of those functions that are looking for commands from the TCM, if you don't have those commands, then none of those functions work. And that's something you need to realize that if you don't have a perfectly designed integration package, electronics integration package to allow the, trans or the engine to get that information that it's missing from the factory training, then all these creature comfort things, they don't work anymore. I mean, things like as simple as a remote start that came from the factory. Something as simple as you put it in reverse and reverse lights camera come on. Something as simple as cruise control. Those are things that I don't want to, that I'm not okay losing when I change the transmission out because I'm looking for reliability. You know, I'm not okay losing those things. You know, it's just, it's not, and that's one of the really sweet things about the package we're offering is every single piece works it all it all works as factory so i'm going to kind of move on to showing you a couple of the comparisons you know now that now that you kind of get a base idea of like what it's going to take to go from a chrysler transmission to an allison transmission and show you a few of the pieces as far as the hard parts go so so kind of my intent here is to give you an apples to apples kind of comparison and i know it's kind of hard because it's like apples and oranges but but the big decision to be made here, right? So I'm going to show you some of the some of the major differences between these two transmissions. One, when we when we stick with the 68, the val the the just the valve body itself. I mean, you're talking about the things you have to upgrade. Is you know full full billet channel plate, all billet accumulators, remodified or steel valves. A lot of work done to this valve body. The Allison valve body. And we also need a co-pilot on the 68, just because, again, the design. So you're kind of like dealing with the hydraulic modifications and you have to co the co-pilot. On the Allison swap, we've built the co-pilot features into our TCM, which is really killer. So essentially, this is the valve body you get. Brand new, really sweet, bolts in, that does all the controls. When you're talking about the pump, get an idea of What's going on with the pump? This is our 68 pump. Every 68 we build has a billet pump in them. Pretty much had to do that just because the Chrysler pump doesn't give us the size and the material. So again, we go into that more detail later. This is the pump ugh, on, the, on the Allison. I mean, it's a monster. You know, he just gives us, that's the heartbeat, right? I mean, that's what gives us, that's the blood flow. That's what gives us the pressure and the volume and the cooling and everything for that basically scaled down medium duty tranny, right? So you start to get a little bit of an idea. It's just, just bigger and you know, it's just inherently better. Your low reverse clutch, this is what you use when you're back in a trailer up the hill. This is the clutch in the 68 RFE. This is the clutch in an Allison. Basically do the exact same job. You know, it's just bigger, not to mention there's a lot more of them. So you just don't have to do a lot of extra modifications you know, to get them to do the job. The third gear clutch, for instance. Now the Allison, the low reverse clutch, I'm sorry, the, the uh, second gear, third gear clutch, they're basically the same. That's what you have here. So obviously, you know, when, you're, when we're talking about these clutches, we're talking first, second, third. You know, both trainees are pretty good, first, second, third, reverse. The real problem comes into overdrive. On the 68 RFE, fourth gear, we all know that fourth gear is just miserating because the the power flow, the size of the clutches, the hydraulics, these are essentially more kind of like your fourth gear clutches, you know, that are on. 
this is what you're comparing to, okay, on your 68. These are your fourth gear clutches. Not only do you have such a bigger clutch pack on the Allison, I mean, you have so many of them. This is all we can put into a 68. But look at the size. And if you're looking at the clutch itself, right, give you a really good idea. Allison versus 68. This is the big failure on the 68. We just, you know, the industry just fights keeping these things alive for many, many reasons. Again, I go into it on our full explanation of the 68 RFE upgrade. Again, not to talk the 68 down, 68's a great tranny. And those of you that are looking for, you know, a good reliable transmission that is going to do normal work, then the 68 is certainly a little bit less money. Of course, with the bell housing, with our electronics, with everything we've done on the Allison and also not having to go with extreme upgrades in the Allison, it really is shifting that cost down to where, you know, you're only a couple thousand dollars apart whether you go for the Allison upgrade or you go the 68 upgrade. A couple other things I want to show you. Your input shaft, this is your input shaft in your overdrive clutch drum on your 68 RFE. Everything we do pretty much on the 68 is generally a billet input that's in our stage two. The Allison, you don't need to do a billet input shaft until you're well up in the 500 plus or 600 horsepower range. This is the input shaft, so you get, kind of get an idea. You got 68, you got Allison. You know, it's just kind of like, damn, it's, it's just, it's a big deal, right? Intermediate shaft, same type of deal. So you're talking intermediate shaft, you know, you got, you got the same type of thing. You're either intermediate or your overdrive shaft. Just, just bigger, you know, just having the, having all those years of Allison taking that big medium duty transmission and kind of shrinking it down slightly for a light duty truck versus taking a 1500 transmission and trying to grow it up, but not really grow it up because the parts didn't get bigger. That's really where so much of the deficiencies have come from. So, you know, that, that's, kind of, that, that's kind of the heart of, of what's happening here. Now, I didn't cover the 69, the 68 or the 68, the nine. The 68 transmissions are generally not really rebuildable. There's no additional upgrades for them, no hard parts. The parts are very expensive. Um, some of the stuff you can't even buy individually. You have to buy valve body and pump assemblies together from the dealer. It's, just, it's, it's really a problem. So if you have a 68 RSC, like from 07 to 12, just, just, just go to the Allison. You know, just don't even waste your money because the 68 or the 68 RC, which is the ASIN, early ASIN, is incredibly problematic. The 69 is a pretty darn good tranny. Now that came out in 13 and it, and it, and it continues to run today. It's a big tranny and it holds good power, but there's no TCM tuning. And you know, the, just the, the inherent way it's designed, it runs max line pressure all the time. So in the typical transmission world, in order to make these trannies hold more power, will increase line pressure. Well, they've already maxed line pressure out and they control the clutch applications based on on time and off time of the clutches. So the, so the 69, is big, it's about the same size as the Allison. It holds good power and it's pretty reliable, but it doesn't function well. It doesn't shift really well under heavy power demands. Um, there's absolutely no TCM tuning. They're, the parts are very expensive, the same type of deal. So it's kind of getting to that point that if you want a basic you know, upgrade, you know, like a stage one, stage two, 69, that's, you know, that's, that's a good, that's an upgrade package. But for what it costs to upgrade it to an Allison, you kind of get everything. And what I didn't mention yet is with the Allison, you get full transmission tuning capability. That's because we're using an open architect TCM that allows us to log right into it. You can log into it. You can literally use EFI Live, get into the Allison TCM. You can program your upshifts, your downshifts, your part throttle shifts, your torque converter clutch application. The big thing that it means to you is you can set it up or we can set it up for your exact tire size, your exact gear ratio, your exact engine size. And with our electronics, we're taking all the torque tables from the engine that it's transmitting to the TCM and we transmit that information to the Allison TCM. So again, the Allison TCM thinks it was designed from the factory, belongs in that vehicle and the vehicle's computer 
thinks that it's talking to or getting information from the 68 or the 69 or whatever TCM it was. So it's a complete pass through. So pretty much we're giving you everything you've ever wanted. Ease of installation, full driver control, all the creature comforts at an affordable price. So I tell you what, I'm, I'm excited about this. We've been working on this diligently for several years now. And after all these years, getting all the electronics, all the tuning, finding, you know, figuring out all the right parts, casting the bell housing, getting the converter dialed in, the right internal components, having the cores so we can buy all these parts new. And we buy a ton of this stuff brand new. You know, a lot of this now, the other thing you're probably thinking like, okay, what about core charges? This is the other thing that's really cool. So we are offering any upgrades that the core charge, if you have a 68, we will receive your 68 core in lieu of the core charge that would come for the Allison. So if you got a 68 or 69 or you know a 48 or whatever that is, we'll do you an even swap. So now you're talking about a very expensive core. You know, finding a six-speed core is not easy, but again, because we're buying so much of this stuff brand new instead of reman it, we built that in the cost so we can offset it by getting your core back, whatever it is, so you don't have to deal with that old transmission that's useless or burned up or try to sell it or whatever. We ship you a brand new Allison, you ship your core back. The core charges an even swap. So that's, that's, that's kind of a good deal. So anyway, we got more videos coming. Um, this is a, this is a pretty, pretty fun build for us, the elaborate install. We're doing a couple. We're doing an install in 69 um, next, and we're doing an install in the 68. Um, right behind that so you can kind of follow the build and uh, sure you some questions that come up but we'll do our best to answer everything and check us out on our website atsdiesel.com and appreciate you guys